This story is meant with the greatest and fondest respect to the works of Oliver Postgate, Peter Furman, Russell T. Davis, and everyone else who has kept the blue light flashing. No breach of copyright is meant in any way. Please enjoy this special anniversary story to celebrate the Tin Dog Podcast's first birthday. I present a one-off audio story with those lovely people from that extremely secret organisation, Torchwood. In the bottom left-hand corner of Wales, a meeting is taking place around an IKEA table. Let's listen in. I've been monitoring the activity around the Hellmouth uh, anomaly, uh, I mean rift, and it's been surprisingly quiet, which means we can reinvestigate some of those unsolved torchwood files. The thin one with the dry wit gets out a file and blows dust off it, in the sort of way Eric Morecambe would look at Ernie Wise's wallet. <coughs> this one dates back decades. The winged monsters of Tani Gilch. You know the rules. We don't investigate anything we can't have sex with. Apples and pears, queen mother, God bless her. Ah, but monkey boy. This is season two, and we seem to be moving away from pointless sex scenes, so I thought we might look at this. But this isn't happening in Cardiff, said Gwen. And you know, the only time we lead Cardiff is unseen adventures in, in spin-off novels. Oh, and in audio books. As a rule, we don't set foot outside Cardiff, couldn't we just send Unit? This is an audio adventure, which gives us an unlimited travel budget. I've rang Unit, and they're apparently busy trying to deny any links with the United Nations. And after that, they're all booked up, recording a spin-off story for Big Finish, which leaves only us. Jack, do you want to do the voiceover? Torchwood. Outside the government, beyond the police, off Junction 21, next door to Comet Electricals. Quickly, to the Torchwood Mobile. <laughs> Hello, Ivor. Having a busy day? What are you up to today? Taking coal to Grumbly Town? New shoes for that gold miner whose name no one can ever remember? A new hat for Mrs. Dinwiddie? Saving sheep from the snow? Oh, I see. You're off to see your friends Idris and Blodwin, the dragons. Oh, look, Ivor, you have visitors. No, they're not English tourists coming to stay in their cottage for one week of the year and driving up local house prices. It's those pesky torchwood lot. Yes, Ivor, the famous secret organisation. Oh, hello, Mr. Harkness. Can I ask you a question? Asked the hitherto silent Jones the Steam. Sure. How come you get to walk the streets with a Webley Mark IV on your hip and no one bats an eyelid? This is Wales, after all, you know. Not downtown LA or something. It helps us sell the show to Americans. I mean, who would watch a show where the hero didn't have a gun and solved things using intellect and cunning? Oh, I guess you have a point. I just assumed you were overcompensating for something. How can I help you today? Flying lizards! said Gwen, in a voice that sounded remarkably like Jones the Steam. Ah, you mean the dragons. Oh, quite right, Diver. I mean the non-existent dragons living in the volcano. Oh, you and your fast-talking city ways. I obviously mean the non-existent dragons that definitely don't live anywhere around here because they're not real. How are we doing for time, Gwen? Well, we're past halfway through the episode, so I think we're about to come up with a working hypothesis, so I can reckon the dragons are real, and that they're in that extinct volcano. Uh, the one over there, in fact, boyo. Jack, I hate to be the one to say this, but there's been no homosexualist kissing so far. Apples and pears, queen mother, go bless her. Oh, said Jones the Steam. That's what you think. Me and Dice Station have been doing Little Britain only gain the village jokes all morning. I'm sure you lot do those all the time down there in that there Cardiff. Good point, Jones, said the also hitherto silent Dice Station. Let's go to the mountains, said Jack. Ivor says he can give you a lift if you want. 
I must say that's very good of you, Ivor. Ah, ah, you think the plot is flagging and you want things to move along a bit. Let's leave the Torchwood Mobile here and head out on Ivor. Gwen, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Gwen nodded. Why doesn't your hair ever move? Is it a wig? Come on, you can tell me. No one's around. Oh, look, Ivor, we're here. Tosh, you've been quiet. Oh, you have a sore throat. And the narrator doesn't think he's up to doing your voice. Well, he's butchering any attempt at mine. Anything on that tricorder? I mean the non-copyright breaching scanning device? Oh, do you think he's noticed those dragons? What, those red heraldic ones spinning meters above us? Gwen, what's that flashing? Is it one of those anomalies from Primeval? No, it's a tourist camera. Ah, said Jones the steam. So you've found our little secret. Every so often the dragons come out f for the tourists and get their photos taken. The pictures are blurred and because they move so fast there's no actual risk of anyone believing the pictures are real. Those dragons saved our town. <coughs> Thanks to the tourists. You're not going to take them away from us, are you, Mr. Harkness? No, but it is likely that Owen's going to try and snog one of them. I'd resent that remark if I hadn't uh, seen the rest of this story arc. Look, Mr. Harkness, one of them wants to ask you a question. Do you know a land of my father? No, it's a bide by me or nothing. You know, that still doesn't solve the real mystery. You mean how Ivor is a steam engine and he can speak? Oh, that's easy. Ivor was made from a living metal that came through the rift at the end of the tea time war. Sorry? Did I say too much? Uh, I mean, he's magic. Ah. Tell you what, let's go home and have a nice cup of tea. That's hardly a satisfying end to the narrative. Can't we blow something up or lose a loved one through a time riff, if you like? Will it help the fan base? No, not really. I'll just go put the kettle on. And so, we leave this quiet corner of Wales and journey back to podcast land. Thanks for listening to my pointless ramblings for over the last year. Happy anniversary. Be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk Thank you.